Good morning class, how have you been? I hope you guys are doing well. It has been some time since we met. Uh, but today we have to discuss a very significant chapter from this text. If you look at the evolution of the kind of things that you have been learning in this text, you will understand that this has been a constant training for you people to understand things from the perspective of other people. That is, your life is quite limited. The kind of experiences that you will have in this lifetime will be very limited. It's not necessary that you undergo all kinds of uh, intense experiences that uh, life has in offer. So uh, through these stories, through these poems that we have been learning, we have been getting a glimpse into the sufferings of other people, uh, to the kind of life that they go, to, go through, the kind of emotional lives that they go through. Uh, this is actually enriching uh, us as individuals, as social beings. So well, once, once again, we have a story uh, which actually would help you look at things uh, from a very different perspective. Uh, earlier we have learned uh, the lives of different kinds of people. Now we are looking at the lives of uh, differently abled people. Differently abled people. So uh, if at all we do not have a um, direct personal experience, we are not mostly exposed to the lives of differently abled people, differently abled children and the lives of uh, differently abled children's parents what kind of sufferings that they go through, what kind of sacrifices that they have to make in order to take care of a differently abled child. Uh, you know, how the society, does the society actually provide uh, uh, some kind of support uh, to the parents of differently abled uh, children? Or does the child, does the differently abled child actually feel secure in a society? Uh, is the society uh, you know, yet ready to accept uh, differently able children? There are many questions uh, which actually get discussed in this story. Uh, before we get into the story, we will uh, have a brief introduction uh, about the author of the story who is a significant uh, writer of the uh, era. So we will have a quick uh, overview of the author's life and begin. So the author's name is Anne Tyler. Uh, I, I think some of you, at least some of you must have heard the name of Anne Tyler and about some of her works. So Anne Phyllis Tyler, born on 25th October 1941 at Minneapolis, Minnesota, United States of America, is an American novelist, short story writer and a literary critic. As her father, Lloyd Paddy Tyler, who was an industrial chemist, and her mother, uh, Phyllis Mahon Tyler, a social worker. So you can see uh, where mm, her insights about life come from. Her father, what kind of work her father does, what kind of work her mother does. Most of the time, an author's uh, you know creative experiences come from the kind of uh, parental background that they have also. So her, her mother is a social worker. They were actively part, uh, practicing Quakers. Quakers is a religious uh, sect. Uh, her early formative uh, period was spent in various Quaker communities in uh, North Carolina and other states. Since her school days, uh, she displayed an interest in literature, painting and uh, storytelling. After graduating from Duke uh, University, North Carolina, she worked as a bibliographer there uh, before moving to uh, McGill University, Montreal as a librarian. In 1963, Tyler married Taghi Mohammad uh, Modarasi, an Iranian psychiatrist and a novelist. Again, uh, her association with another novelist. They have two daughters, Tesh and Mitra. And she lives in Baltimore, Maryland, where most of her novels are set. So uh, now coming to the kind of works that Anne Tyler has produced. Uh, we, have, we are moving on from her personal life to her literary life. Though Tyler was well known as a short, short story writer since her childhood, her first work of fiction was If Morning Ever Came and then uh, it was published in 1964. And the Tin Can Tree, published in 1965, uh, Slipping Down Life, 1970, and The Clock Winder, 1972, Celestial Navigation, 1974, 
and searching for Caleb in 1975. And these were uh, some of the early novels which she, through which she gained widespread critical attention. The best known of her 22 novels are Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant, which was published in 1982, and The Accidental Tourist, 1985, and oh, this was awarded the National Book Critics Circle Award for Fiction in 1985, and uh, Breathing Lessons in 1988, uh, for which she was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1989. Digging to America 2006 and The Beginner's Goodbye 2012, A Spool of Blue Thread 2015 and Vinegar Girl 2016. These are some of her contemporary novels, popular contemporary novels. She received the Sunday Times Award for Literary Excellence in 2012, another very popular recognition that she has got. Tyler has occasionally been classified as a Southern author or a modern American author. Several of her novels are adapted as movies. Tyler simply writes for the sake of storytelling and larger questions that emerge in her novels are only accidental. So uh, there are different kinds of writers. Some writers actually uh, produce their works you know, intending uh, it to connect to some kind of a larger theme. I want to write about this theme and then they uh, create the characters and the setting and all. But uh, Tyler's, you know, thematic concerns are accidental rather than intentional, she says. She writes for the sake of storytelling, but the kind of social themes that emerge uh, are not intentional, but rather comes as the process of writing uh, goes on, according to herself, probably. So this is about Anne Tyler who is a very significant writer and when you will read the short story you will understand uh, the kind of writing style of the writer and how she is actually trying to look at the lives of others through her imagination or probably she, she is a good, good observer too, she has observed or maybe has had personal experiences uh, with differently abled children and the lives of their parents. So. Uh, We'll go into a general introduction about the work. The narratives of mental illness have become a new trope of literary studies. That is, uh, you know, this is something that is emerging. That literature which deals with the uh, lives of differently abled people, uh, 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 you know, deals with the problems of mental illness and the kind of social stigma uh, that is there against uh, people who have uh, mental difficulties, who face mental difficulties. All these questions are actually becoming more and more uh, interesting an area of writing and research now because the society is actually becoming uh, more accepting towards uh, you know, people who face challenges in life, people who are going through difficulties in life. Uh, there is this word which has been written mentally retarded people's uh, people uh, which mentally retarded people which actually is not a politically correct term now we can use the uh, term differently abled uh, people or uh, differently mentally abled people uh, we can use such uh, you know better terms I believe so that they don't feel socially excluded so the text uh, has not bothered to give that kind of a different terminology as such, but we will use that kind of a terminology throughout the discussion. Mentally, uh, uh, especially abled children's uh, uh, basic human rights are often violated by a society which traditionally perceived a disease as a curse uh, of God and a punishment of the parents' sins. Earlier, uh, this, this was the kind of attitude that was there. If somebody uh, is uh, you know, differently abled, that was seen as some kind of punishment which was given by God for their previous sins. Thus, uh, such people are always stigmatized and excluded from the purview of their social rights. Uh, and uh, autistic children, autistic children are often abandoned by parents and sometimes sent to uh, mental asylums for special purposes. There is another situation in which the parents are forced to take 
the illness as a hereditary one which leads to a situation of self denial and self tormenting in some situations if the problem is hereditary the the kind of trauma that the parents undergo is again something that we you know should empathize with should uh, look at and feel the kind of uh, you know difficulties that they go through there is a in certain cases one of the parents abandons the child this is something that happens in some some cases one parent is not you know ready to take the responsibility of a differently abled child and then they abandon the family and there is the single parent who has to take care of the child and which is a very difficult task considering the kind of social attitudes that are prevalent in our society Uh, this makes specially abled children and their parents marginalized we have discussed this problem of marginalization marginalization means you are excluded from the mainstream of the society or not able to become part of the kind of privileges that mo- almost all the people have your life is a bit more difficult than the lives of other people so uh, the lives of uh, the the people who are differently abled or people who have to take care of the differently abled uh, children are actually socially marginalized so coming to the discussion of the plot of the story or what actually we are going to learn in this story average waves in unprotected waters which was originally published in the new yorker on february 28 1977 deals with the pangs of an ordinary working class woman bet blevins that's the name of the central character who is attempting to institutionalize her uh, specially abled son arnold who was 9 years of age so this is about the story of a mother who is trying to hospitalize her differently abled or you know the child who is facing mental uh, difficulties so for a mother uh, she must have taken care of the child till the age of 9 but after that uh, him being a boy and him actually being uh, stronger than the mother and more compulsive in nature it becomes very difficult for the mother to for the single mother to take care of the child herself without any kind of family support or support from the part of the husband who has who has left her and the child so she is going to hospitalize the child so the kind of mental difficulties that the mother would be undergoing Uh, the kind of identity crisis as a mother as a caretaker that she will be undergoing all that gets discussed in the story uh, so her son arnold is now 9 years of age so this is narrated from the point of view of a single mother and it is rich in uh, themes parenting a uh, theme with the, the difficulties of parenting especially when you have a mentally differently abled child and absent fathers and identity and self discovery when you go through these kind of experiences you learn what kind of a person am i or you know you you look back into the memories of life to see how you have evolved what you have become or how uh, life has changed you the kind of challenges that life has given you Uh, so the story begins with bet preparing her son in the morning to take him to the parkins state hospital critics observe that memory that plays an important role in almost all of taylor's fiction is a disconnecting as well as a connecting force both a loving characters to make discoveries about themselves and serving as a means of alienation so memory is something we say that the past is still present within us because it is the past that shapes us it is the past that shapes our understanding about ourselves so throughout the story we can see bet blevins the central character going through uh, flashbacks in her memory which actually defines her identity her memory as the, her father's daughter at home her memory as a wife uh, of a husband who abandons her when she has a differently abled child it is through the this kind of a scanning of her memory that she makes sense of her life what what my life is or, or what am i becoming what kind of a person am i 
you know uh, what what kind of responsibilities made me reach here all these things are made clear to us through her memories so memory here is becomes a disconnecting force uh, as well as a connecting force memory connects the person with one's own life also it isolates or alienates that person because it is through memory that uh, the mother understands that she is actually alone in this world family provides a contradictory force in tyler's fiction uh, the kind of you know narratives about family all supporting all caring kind of a family is what we see in very positive kind of stories but here family is a contradicting force uh, does the family allow somebody to choose their own lives in beth blevins case uh, she married for love uh, so uh, her parents were against the marriage that is why she uh, why she gets socially alienated one reason why she gets socially alienated and then her husband abandons her so the question of family the kind of uh, disorientation about the positive narrative about family how fam- whether family is something that allows you to be yourself or take your own decisions or you know whether family is actually that kind of a connecting and supporting many questions emerge in the case of uh, bet blevins which uh, which are open questions for us to decide on the one hand family nurtures and sustains an individual and provides him or her with a basic identity and on the other it is also a unit of stagnation and can strip the individual of his identity that is on the one hand family provides all the kind of basic necessities that uh, an individual needs but at the same time family can strip you of your capability to make your own decisions and choose your own life these are questions that emerge in the story in many ways the story is about the search for self which ends in bet's realization that she is empty alone suddenly void like the bombed out train station where she uh, she is sitting at the end of the story so somebody who is going through a lot in their life and the mother of a differently abled child the kind of experiences that she has to go through the kind of memories she has about her past life and you know this act of hospitalizing her child and this act of seeing her child being taken away by the nurses so the kind of questions that the mother has about herself about what kind of a person she is what kind of a person she has evolved to be in life all these things come to our mind we learn to look at life for at for at least a moment from the perspective of a mother of a differently abled child this kind of a perspective is very essential because we we need to be open towards these kinds of lives so that you know we are more kind towards them we are more empathetic towards them so this chapter would act definitely be a wonderful reading experience the story would definitely be a wonderful reading experience it could be slightly disturbing but understand that this is very essential if you live in a society you should definitely know about the kind of problems that the marginalized communities in the society are facing so differently abled people are definitely marginalized uh, communities and their parents are of course uh, marginalized communities who are going through a lot in their life so we will be able to understand them better empathize with them better through literary works like this so go ahead uh, read the story and there will be an analysis uh, sessions offered by other teachers uh, about the story this was only a very brief introduction to the story i hope you enjoyed it thank you for listening and i hope you guys are keeping safe so thank you very much and take care